Good morning! I am jumping on now for the second time. I want to make sure that you guys can see me, you can hear me okay. We are making beef brisket and I might want to show you just how simple it is to make because when you're doing this in the slow cooker, this really tough bit of meat that you would never want to be using in a fry pan or anything like that is actually incredible. Um, and so succulent and so soft if you um, if you slow cook it. I want to make sure that you guys can hear and you can see me. Can you please say hello? Give me a little thumbs up and let me know that, um, yeah, that you can see me okay. The recipe for this one, yay, there we go. Jodie, great. Guys, say hi, give me some love. Make sure that you can see me okay. Awesome. I think the last one wasn't working as well. <laughs> Um, this recipe, uh, is in your email. So you have to join with your email address and I've popped it just here in the description in case you've found your way into, um, this Facebook group. Let me do this up a bit higher so you guys can see it, but you haven't actually got the, um, recipes. All you need to do is... I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> um, all you need to do is subscribe and they literally get emailed on straight away. If you're having any issue finding your email, they can be pesky and I'm so sorry, but it happens to me too <laughs> when I join things, is that you're gonna have to jump on your desktop, have a look, go into your promo folder, have a look in your spam, search Stace at Stacey Claire, or even search Stacey Claire and see what comes up. If though you have any pickles, and there has been absolutely people that have done all that, um, I want to help. So just shoot me a direct message. I responded to 280 <laughs> this morning. Um, yeah, so awesome. Okay, yeah, so just find those in there. Okay, so let's get going on this. I've got my brisket. Now, the first time I made this recipe, at my butcher, they had a full one and a half kilo lot. I couldn't get that this time, so I had to do it over two. Don't fear that. They are still going to be cute. Um, yeah, they're still going to be fine, even if they're cut. I know it wasn't a cute cell. <laughs> I love that. She's kind of like that. It's wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to do the spice rub. I'm just grabbing up the exact recipe. Um, because I don't want to get it wrong. Because <laughs> I'll start just putting a few things in and that's not right. Um, you could make up this rub recipe the night before. And I do have that in the recipe guide. Is that if you have time, make this up before. And I hope you do that the next time you make it. Because I bet that this is going to become a family favourite. And you'll want to make it again and again. I know I love making it um, if I'm having someone come over. This is such a good entertainer's one that is so low, um, you know, so low use. You don't really have to be um, manning it so much. All right, let's get going on the rub. So into the rub. Sorry, this phone keeps turning off. Okay, a tablespoon of sugar. I'm using Rapadura. The... I'm just making myself up to a tablespoon with my teaspoons there. This, I use Rapadura often because it is such a wonderful sugar that is made from the whole cane plant. It means that it has more fibre in it. It is less up and down with our blood sugar levels. And I love the taste of it. It's, um, it hasn't been bleached, well not bleached, but boiled so that all the colour has gone from it. So that's why it's a beautiful brown. You'll be able to get that at your supermarket. Literally, Woolies and Coles have it. Look for Rapadura or Panella sugar um, and try them. They're really great. All right, so we've got that. We need some smoked paprika. This is the stuff that will add in that kind of depth of barbecue flavor. For me, smoked paprika is one of my best friends. I know especially way back in my early 20s, a long time ago, when I was vegan, I really fell in love with smoked paprika because it had that flavor of bacon. So if you are veggio, you will love this. So if you're trying to add in 
extra flavour. Smoked paprika is by far my very, very, very favourite spice. Okay, so I've got that. We've got some onion powder. So we're going to do a teaspoon of that. All of these are just my little Ikea ones. Some garlic granules or powder. I always have the granules. I love them. Put a little bit extra of that bit in. Some mustard seeds. Choose black or yellow. It doesn't matter. Um, yes, and chuck steak is wonderful. Absolutely. I'm going to talk to you girls about that in a sec of what else you can substitute this for. Some cumin seeds. Absolutely too. When you guys are seeing these, like cumin seeds, and you've only got cumin powder, just use cumin powder. You can switch in and out, and that's the thing I love about a slow cooker, is that they're often so forgiving. <laughs> you know, you can't really do that with a salad. The texture's going to be off. Whereas this guy, he's slow cooking for eight hours. So if you've got mustard powder instead of seeds, who cares? Or vice versa. You know, you've only got um, garlic powder instead of granules. Just use it. Honestly, it's so fine. And definitely... You know, if you are worried about that and you want to just check those questions, that's the stuff that we have this wonderful Facebook group for. So ask that of us. Just be like, hey, I'm thinking of, of doing this to anybody else and we can help you. Okay, half a teaspoon of salt and pepper. And then look at that. I mean, this is something of beauty, isn't it? Give it a stir. And already, like, I love looking at this stuff like that. That looks like it's going to be a good meal, right? <laughs> Do you feel that as well? And we're going to get this just over the top of it. And when you're doing it, now you could absolutely go and sear this on. But I, um, I don't always sear my meat. A lot of my recipes in my full slow cooker course, so you have the option um, to join me for that, to, to extend, I guess, this slow cooking um, fun for four full weeks. And in that, there is a lot of the recipes that I do sear. But I find with this one, I, I can be a bit more forgiving with it because it makes such a thick barbecue sauce that I reduce down later. It's okay. Or you can also, once it's slow cooked, and I'm probably going to do it tonight because I'll have a bit more time, being a Saturday night, is that I can put it underneath the grill and get it that little bit crispy. And I just find it's wonderful. So there we go. That's literally what we look like. Look at that gorgeous, all of that smoked paprika and everything that's on. Make sure to, and you could be doing this over the top of your slow cooker, is that you don't waste any of these spices, right? So this isn't the thing that when you dump this into the slow cooker, that you leave three quarters of the spice. No, 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 no. You gotta save that. All right, let me grab a tea towel because I just wiped my hands on my jeans. <laughs> hands up. <laughs> Who does that a little too often? That is me. All right, let's get going with making up the sauce. So we want to use, and I love that there's been so many questions about this in the Facebook group, is what is a good barbecue sauce? This one. It's actually quite good by the name, good sauce. I get this from my independent grocery store. I see it at every green grocer, at um, a health food store. I understand they're not in Woolies and Coles. I'm sure they're trying to get in there, but these guys are wonderful. Like if I read the ingredients, organic tomatoes, um, balsamic vinegar, coconut aminos, which is a lot like um, a terra, like, sorry, my brain's gone, is a lot like a soy sauce um, or tamari. Monk fruit juice concentrate, which that monk fruit is a really wonderful sugar. I actually cook with that a fair bit. Spices and sea salt. There's no flavors, there's no numbers, there's nothing in this. So hunt it down. Uh, this guy cost me about $4. So it is a bit more expensive, but you're worth it. <laughs> Um, and the amount that this makes, I just think it's worth, you know, getting the right thing. Okay, so we're in for half a cup, I think. If my memory serves me correct. Yep, half a cup. And then I'm going to be naughty here. I'm going to see if this works, actually, because this is quite a thick seal. Yeah. Oh, no. That's what I've just done. I need to pour that out. 
guess what I just did? I just put macadamia oil. <laughs> I was wondering why that wasn't smelling. I don't have that labelled at the moment. Well, is this my apple cider vinegar? Oh yeah, this is making a noise as I'm opening it like it's fermented. Oh man. Whoa! That's apple cider vinegar. Okay, well I'm glad I could get that off the top. <laughs> We've got apple cider vinegar as well. I'm just gonna whack these straight into the slow cooker. I don't put them anywhere else, like I've got that going, but truth be told, I probably could have done that in the slow cooker, but there was a bit of blood and I just wanted to get rid of that. Um, oh, awesome. There's another good one at Coles. Thank you for that. Uh, okay, quarter of a cup of sugar. Now, you are gonna need sugar in this. Why are you gonna need sugar in this? And this is the stuff that I love helping you girls with is, is teaching you, um, you know, how to be more confident cooks. Why you would use the sugar, that's my quarter of a cup, is because it is what is going to get you that sticky crumb. It's what's going to get it to reduce down and go really, really thick. So without it, you will find that the stickiness, which is part of what is just so delicious about this brisket, won't happen. Um, and that's a shame. You know, you want to be able to, to have that. Okay, um, we need garlic cloves. I'm going to be naughty and I'm going to use probably one and a half teaspoons of my granulated garlic. But you can absolutely just mash your garlic cloves in there. Tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. This is the stuff that mum used to make always put in um, her meatloaf. <laughs> and whenever I'm slow cooking a red meat, well, not always, but I'd say 90% of the time, and definitely the, my red meat recipes that you'll see in my full four week course, you will see Worcestershire in it. It is just such a wonderful flavor to bring those together. And now if you'd like, you can put the cayenne pepper in, but that's optional. So let me show you what we're dealing with here and how it looks. This is everything in the cooker. Just like this. And now give it a stir. Why are we stirring it? Well, we're just gonna make sure that it's, that it's well combined. And the smell, <laughs> is anybody else getting that wonderful smell already that is just like, oh yeah, this is gonna be good. That is definitely what I have going on there. So that's perfect. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy and I'm doing this. See here, I'm not just plonking it in. I'm going to turn that about three or four times because I want it to be coated. Now, if you had one, you wouldn't need to do that, but I've got two. So I'm going to do it with the second one as well. See here, like all on the sides of it all on the back, all of this. And then kind of nestle it in. I'm gonna just put you down for a sec and I'm gonna grab out, I've still got some of the herbs that are in the bottom of my dish that I was marinating in. I don't wanna lose those. These are wonderful. So I'm just going to get them out. And with those, instead of chucking it in the sauce, I'm just putting it, like spooning it over the top. Don't worry, I'll get you back in here to show you exactly what I've done. I'm also going to use my spatula. I love my silicon spatulas and get every last drop of that sauce out. Okay, let's put that in here and wash my hands for a sec. show you girls. <laughs> Does anybody else get really excited when they see this stuff? It's just like, oh man, this is going to be so delicious. Look at that. Look at it. So that was what I was saying there of get the spices on top just as is. And now you're going to slow cook that baby. So a lid on. Oh, 
And actually, no, I'll talk to you about it here so that I don't, I don't move around too much because I don't want to make you sick. You might be sort of questioning right now, and I'm going to just whack this on while... eight to 10 hours. Now, because mine are smaller cuts, because I've had to use two, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put mine on low for seven hours, knowing that it's Saturday, I'm here, you know, I can, I can check it out, and I'm gonna see if that is cooked after seven hours. If I'm still wanting to get out, you know, and I'm, I'm still running errands and such, then I know with my slow cooker, and hopefully you've got one like it too, is it'll kick over into the keep warm function. So it can stay warm there, um, you know, and I'll be able to use it, I'll be able to get to it later on. How will I know if it's cooked? Literally just grab your knife and chop the little side of it and have a taste. If the meat feels very soft, often you'll find too, because the brisket is such a beautifully delicious fatty muscle meat you'll get that really wonderful glisten it'll look like shiny that is what you are after um and that one is just so good so that's when it, like i know if i chop it it looks really glistening and it's like soft then it's great what you'll do then is you'll pull out your briskets just whack them back on a plate and i like to it's totally your call but I really like to reduce down the sauce. I think that's what absolutely makes this. Um, and you'll do that in a pan on your uh, cooktop, or you may um, have one of those fancy pants cookers, uh, like one of the all-in-ones, um, and I, I do have one of those. <laughs> but they're in storage at the moment while we're living in a unit and renovating our house. Um, those ones are wonderful. What I would do if you have one of those is I would turn it on to the sear option. So take your meat out still, sear option, lid off, and let that thicken in there. You can absolutely too, if you want to go to town, and I'm probably going to, and don't worry, I'll jump back in this afternoon and show you girls that I'm doing it. Um, I'm going to probably whack that underneath the grill, especially with the sauce, and really thicken it up. It's going to be wonderful, um, yeah, to see that. You might be surprised here too of, Stace, why haven't I added liquid? Is it... <coughs> Sorry, I've got a frog. I'm just going to take a quick drink of water. Excuse me. Um... Yeah, the reason that you haven't added in water is, just a second, guys, can you just be quiet for a little sec? Thank you. Real life happening in the background, hopefully it's happening at yours too. Um, but is because if you started putting more liquid in there, then it, um, then it would, you can sit up here darling, it would get even wetter and you'll find that you actually don't need that with this meat. It, it will, because you are doing it at that low temperature and it's slowly cooking, it's like how you do it in the oven. So don't fear this. Please don't go and be like, oh, I wanna add a cup of broth, you know, just for health benefits or any of that. It's not necessary because this recipe, you're trying to take all of the liquid out at the end, right? So if you're putting even more in, you're gonna start diluting those flavors and keep that in mind if you are doing any of your slow cooking and you're wanting to get quite a bit of flavour in there, is that really monitor how much liquid you're actually adding. Because if you're adding in so much liquid, it's not going to end well, right? It's going to be like a gluggy mess. And I should say then, if, if, if that is sort of that you guys are wanting to learn a bit more about slow cooking and you no, I think we all do, um, that they can save you so much time Mommy. and get you, yes? Mommy, did you do this stuff? Huh? I did. Oh. It's good, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, do you want to see what it looked like? Oh. And there it is. Oh. Okay. <laughs> I think she's a bit upset that she didn't. 
cook with me. But yeah, if you want to get, you know, cooking more with your slow cooker and, and finding ways, um, you know, to make meals that are simple like this, then you will absolutely love that I have a four week course that is similar. It runs just like this, where I send you on the shopping list and the recipes um, and the meal plan with all those pretty pictures. And you can cook from that and then cook from your cooker each day as well. Um, sometimes we cook so much that we'll have leftovers and these three days we will. And I will help you both in the full course, but also in here because um, I'm so grateful that I'm able to motivate you girls to try your cooker with some different recipes, is um, I will show you how you can use these up in different ways. Because let me give you some ideas now. Your beef brisket, we're having it tonight on um, a burger. But I'm interested actually now, grab your keyboard and let me know, are you eating it a different way? That brisket with mashed potato and greens, can you imagine? And that sticky sauce over the top. Give me some love <laughs> if you love the sound of that. There's that. I love, I sent it to school with the kids. It was so wonderful, actually. My eldest, um, he really, he calls it, is it gonna be um, soft meat mama? Like when he, when, I've, when he sees like I've cooked something like that. And I made it on a baguette for him and it was awesome. Um, can the recipes be adapted for a pressure cooker? Some of them can, darling, but no, I wouldn't pressure cook. Um, I also give you recipes in the full course that aren't um, dinner recipes. So there'll be breakfast ones and there'll be muesli bars. I've got a carrot cake that I'm about to ice that we made in the slow cooker. I make muesli bars, I make sticky date pudding. Those things aren't good in pressure cookers. But brisket is, and quite a few of the recipes are, but not everything. So if you've only got a pressure cooker, um, then yeah, it's probably um, worth spending the 39 bucks and grabbing uh, this one from Kmart that's got the timer on it. But yeah, so this is also wonderful. Sorry, I went off on a tangent, but how else you can eat these leftovers is they're great on rice paper rolls. Have we got any rice paper roll fans in the house? Let me know with that. These are wonderful with that. That stickiness is so delicious. Think of it with some spring onions, some peanuts, some sliced radishes, some, you know, maybe um, having some of your uh, like rice, uh, rice noodles would be really really good as well those are it's that there's so many ways and I will shoot you on an email um, after this so make sure you are getting my emails with just a link here making sure you have all the recipes but I'm going to include in there a whole heap of ways that you can use up these leftovers I mean I guess the most perfect way is to whack it in the freezer for another night if you're going to love this on burgers, on wraps, however that is tonight, think about how much you're going to love this on a Wednesday night in four weeks' time, you know, when life is busy and you're like, I've got nothing. And then you're like, oh, my God, I've got that brisket. <laughs> you know, bring it in, bring it in, bring it in. Like, that's, that's what you want. Um, yeah, so I will also put here in the comments um, the link to join the full course. It's not open for a long time. It's only $99.00. You do have an option to upgrade um, to also add in my full meal plan membership for a year um, so that you can be cooking this way for a full year. It's not just slow cooker meals, there's all in one meals, there's stir fries, there's breakfast, all of this stuff, but you'll basically be able to get my organization for a full year um, and keeping you on track with that stuff, plus my fermenting course. So I haven't opened that up in 11 months uh, and if you are new around here, you may not also know that I've got two loves in my cooking world. The first is a slow cooker and the second is fermenting. Um, it's definitely a way that I keep healthy uh, and, and keep those bugs at bay by putting in live fermented foods. It's full of all that good gut bacteria to boost our immune system. You can, in that upgrade option, it's $350. You can add that on 
So the fermenting course alone is $250. The membership alone is $350. And then you've also got the cost of this course. So it is such a huge saver. Um, I've been asked by many that could I do that as a payment plan because so many want to jump on that. And I am going to sort that later today as well. So, um, and I'm hoping to sort after pay as well. But there is a credit card option. There is uh, PayPal as well. But yeah, it's, if you want to just do the course, which is, is wonderful, I shouldn't say just do the course. If you want to do the course, it's $99. Um, yeah, it's awesome. Um, oh, Christine, if you're in my membership, you don't have to pay. That's what I do. And, and girls, that's another reason to want to get in on that $350 deal. Anything that I do, you girls get for free. Um, so I will be running short courses like this next year as well. And whenever I run those, if you're in the membership, then they're yours for free. You don't have to pay the extra $100. Woo -woo. Uh, yay! <laughs> I'm glad you're excited. Um, yeah, so get that slow cooker on and start. Can you do for me now, before you leave this, is snap a photo, tag me in. I'll be on Insta. I'm Stacey Claire over there on Insta. Um, or tag me in here, post a photo and be like, yes. Um, yeah. That'd be really, really wonderful. See you guys later on. I will definitely pop in. Um, and if there's any questions um, that you have on slow cookers, on this recipe, on any of it, I'm going to be on this Facebook group like all day. So just leave me a question. I'm so happy to help. But if you know the answer to someone else's question, answer that. Um, can I use mustard powder instead of mustard seeds? Yes, 100%. Easy. Um, do I have many vegetarian options? I do, darling. And a lot of them, I um, well, every recipe, I give you an adaption for it. But there is a lot of veggie recipes. We're actually going to be eating vegetarian at least twice a week. But the tweaks you'll be able to make are easy. Like butter chicken. Oh, my gosh. You wait till you girls make my butter chicken in the slow cooker. <gasps> oh, but you know what is incredible? Is butter chickpeas. And I dare say my family... We love it better. They're so delicious. So there are so many ways that um, you'll be able to tweak the recipes. And that's not me giving that like those ideas. It's literally every single recipe sheet at the bottom has adaptions for intolerances and allergies. So I cater for veggio, but I also cater for dairy-free and gluten-free because I don't eat much gluten. Um, I play around with sugars. I play around with carbs, all of that stuff. So if you've got any of that going on, um, yeah, you'll be able to watch it. And yeah, you will be able to replay this live video. I am going to pin it to the top. So as soon as you join back um, on, uh, like you refresh it here on the Facebook group, you'll be able to cook along. And I'll see you girls tomorrow. Well, I'll see you this afternoon. I'm going to show you that one crisping up. But I'll also be back on tomorrow morning to do the chicken noodle soup. I think that's been the most popular so far of people that have already cooked it. It is so simple. There's not crazy flavors. It's not a laksa, you know, it's not adding in so much stuff, which there's a time and place for it. But I really think there's a time and place for really simple, beautiful, slow cooking that you add so many fresh herbs to at the end that just makes every kid want to gobble it up. Um, when do we do the porridge? Karen, maybe. How about we do that tonight? I haven't thought of that. Let's do that. Oh, awesome. We had the soup last night. It was so easy and yum. Yay! All right, my loves, enjoy this one. And um, yeah, be sure to check out for my emails. Make sure that I'm coming through to your inbox. See you soon.